Tech support? Can you please put the slides onto project slides onto the screen? Just swap these two screens. More people than I have expected. <laughs> I'll bring more printouts uh, next next time. So you, you, you can either share or. Yeah. <laughs> Those are to take uh, take home. The, you don't need to <laughs> No, 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 no. Sharing content to this screen. Oh, oh you want to share it? Yes. 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 Okay, I see. This is okay. yep. <laughs> Thanks much for uh, <laughs> uh, choosing this course, although probably it's not a uh, free choice, but uh, mandatory, but I'm pleased to, to see you. Um, did Dr. Han tell you something, or he just distributed uh, syllabus? Yeah, and, and you didn't ask him any questions. Uh, okay. You, okay. So you saved you saved time, you saved his time. He saved your time. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> um, I'm not sure if if I will do the same. <laughs> Maybe it will be a, a little bit more. So uh, those printouts, and uh, I intend to bring more so that you you take home. Uh, it is main form of uh, your reporting. That is being graded. So by the end of the semester, you do little projects, uh, prepare write ups, same as here, and, and uh, present them. And um, this is the main thing. And uh, as we go, I will try to entertain you with some uh, uh, homeworks, but uh, those are not substantial part of, of a grade. So more for me to see. Uh, a feedback from you if you, if you take the information well. So, what's the name of the course? What, what is physical chemistry? To you, what, what are your expectations of physical chemistry? <laughs> Equations. Okay, uh, what else? <laughs> I can satisfy this demand. <laughs> Um, can you do physical chemistry without equations? I don't think so. Huh? I don't think so. Well, not academic, not for the in class for the grade, but if you are uh, targeting academic career in research, is it possible to do physical chemistry uh, without equations? If you have a computer, they won't bore you. Even <laughs> without computer? Maybe. No. Huh? Maybe the same. Even without numbers? Right. So how do you do physical chemistry without computers, without equations, without numbers? Huh? <laughs> no, no. Fingers. <laughs> fingers. What? A lot of letters. <laughs> <laughs> it's more like literature. But um, what is chemistry? 
study of atoms and molecules. Okay, good. And how they break into pieces more or combine together. But uh, so one does uh, synthesis by mixing some uh, pleasantly or not pleasantly uh, ordered liquids, and then you get some new substances. Well, as soon as you have uh, obtained a product of reaction, what do you do with it? Lift your hands if you if you're exposed to the research. One, two. If you have an idea what research is. Okay, good. So what what do you do if, if you are like not physical chemist but chemical chemist? If you if you have a product of a reaction, what, what do you do next? Figure out what it is. Yes, figure out what it is. But uh, what is a smart word? Like yes, characterize. So. Uh, in some sense, characterization is part of physical chemistry. So if you take your sample into a spectrophotometer or to NMR, you, uh, other branches of chem uh, chemistry, like analytical chemistry, can take this mind, but I, I claim it's physical chemistry. We, we will not do experiments here in class, but understanding basics of uh, how uh, the instruments work and how you characterize uh, molecules or maybe something um, collections of molecules, or um, how reactions are, are, are going, it is part of physical chemistry, so characterization. And you can do characterization without uh, equations, without computers, and without, you just need instruments and, and, and chemicals, right? So pra practically, as soon as you have principles that you more or less understand, or even without understanding principles, to put sample into the instrument, you do not need much knowledge. But if you do, it is a plus. So we'll get some some uh, uh, background for this kind of um, procedures. So chemistry is atoms and molecules, right? So atoms, what, what are atoms? Rolling blocks, right? Very versatile, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> what, what, are, are they like blocks, square, rectangle, or like masonry bricks? What are the shape of atoms? They're changeable. Huh? I think that's like. But can you show by your hands how that <coughs> is So you either draw flowers or you show spheres, right? <laughs> That's good. So why why are you showing flowers? Ah, so atom is not like a standalone thing. It, it is composed of something. So it's composed of what? Electron, proton, neutrons. Good, good. And is electron a particle? Yes. It's a provocative question. Well, you don't need this class. You're, you're all already educated. <laughs> so um, if it would be a particle, right? the, the word particle means that you can set it in a, in a space. Tell, here are coordinates of my particle. Right? But uh, if it is a wave, it's distributed everywhere. And it has a little more or a little less amplitude of a wave. And this feature of electrons that they have weighed in nature makes physical chemistry into a special uh, branch of science. If, uh, if you recognize this and, and you see consequences of weighing in nature of electrons onto uh, characterization of, of chemicals, then you do not need this course. You can immediately go to uh, start your research project, get it ready, and do not waste your time. So uh, what, what I'm going to offer is just slowly, but surely speak about the way the nature of electrons from different aspects. Um, as as uh, some of you requested, with equations. But again, this is not a key feature. You can be uh, outstanding physical chemist with uh, publishing papers and getting recognized in the community without writing equations. Those are auxiliary tool that if some concepts are not always possible to intuitively 
imagine for human brain. And the equations are needed if, if something is a little more complicated than you can show this uh, few times. So it's the only way to see unseeable things. Uh, also, it's a little disclaimer in, in before we, we start. So some of you may demand and request equations. Some, some of you may feel uh, uncomfortable about that. So they are not main thing. If the, the equations is, math is a language of physical chemistry. So, and uh, a lot of times we will do the following exercise, and I will forget to announce it, but we will do it all the time. Uh, we will translate observations or words into equations or translate equations into words. So it's nothing but one more language. And uh, being like, if I do not uh, know Spanish, it doesn't mean that uh, I am poor in physical chemistry. Same, if I do not know math, it doesn't immediately mean that I'm poor in physical chemistry. It's one of the languages that makes it a little more complicated. So do not uh, do not fear if you see one. Stop me. I'll, I'll be happy to bring uh, some basics uh, from calculus if uh, it was long time ago for you. It was long time ago for me as well, but I, I'm trying to refresh it from time to time. Okay, so positively charged ions, negatively charged electrons. Electrons have wavy nature. And wavy nature is a challenge for human brain. And uh, we are coming to the idea that from time to time we need math. So if you connect all the things together, it means that we need an equation that describes wavy nature. Equation for wave. Okay. Who can um, write an equation for a wave or any wave? Or has an approximate vision? How should we do? Um, yeah, there should be time. Oh, sign. 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 Okay. Sign of what? Or something. Something. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, so we are considering waves, really. and uh, if uh, I will stay uh, alive and healthy for the next thirty-five minutes. We will depart in peace with uh, knowledge of the wave equation. If, if you do not come into big conflict and uh, everything will go through. So, what do you want to uh, well, want to know? Some people do not want to do anything in physical case. But if one is interested to pursue this path, um, how the equation for a wave should look like? What do we expect before, before we start? Pattern, yes. huh? Gradual. Gradual means uh, it's not in a single point, but it's in different spaces. Right? So it, uh, it should be the equations exist in order for human to solve humans to solve them. Maybe computers, maybe some other things. <laughs> right? So what is the solution of the wave equation? I believe if, if you discuss things ahead, uh, uh, the math part will be uh, less boring and, and easier to digest. So we, we need to define the nature of a wave. And um, for electrons, we need to discuss what is what is waving, right? But uh, wave equation is kind of a um, very nature of thing. And we can, uh, which waves do you know in uh, your regular like, which way do you see? Light. Light? We don't okay. see it. But yeah, yeah, you do not see that it is wave, you know that it is wave. But which objects do you see for sure that they are wave? Water, water. Yeah, it's the best example. And how does it look? Oh. Yeah, yeah, but I can... Go ahead, go ahead, you can show. Oh, when you use this. So the height, the surface, uh, yeah, it's changed. Along, uh, like changes height. The height is 
in one point it is in one point of space it is higher, in another point of space it is lower. Yeah. And the positions of the uh, like peaks and uh, dips are changing in time. Mm -hmm. okay? yeah. So like, you can uh, tell that it is some in, in for what it is height of a surface in, in comparison to like zero level. Um, what other examples you can give? I should sand. Sand, yes, and it is more static. Yeah. Hmm. I always forget to do it, but uh, if uh, you take a long walk, or if you walk in a garden, there is a chain, and you disturb it, and the wave starts going along the stream. So it's, it's very visible by human eye. And if you play uh, any string instrument, it's not very visible by, by, by human eye, but also it's waves traveling, reflecting, going back or good. So wave is a field. It's like uh, dependence of some uh, variable, like height, uh, deviation from average value, as function of position and, and time. Right? Something is changing. And this wave is a solution of wave equation. Right? But you do need an equation that you generate waves. And eventually, you need to build this equation in such a way that waves generated by the equation will reproduce what we see in nature. Okay? So uh, Alyssa was showing like petals. And you, you, in from the uh, freshman chemistry, you probably, or from high school, like S, P, D, all the things. Okay? So electrons, probability waves, there are areas where they have high probability, areas where they have less probability, and so forth, standing waves. So either probability of being present or deviation from average level, or in uh, light, it could be like strength of electric field. That also changes in uh, amplitude and travels. Which equations, which class of equations generate wavy solutions? Typically, like if, if we are in primary school, we like we solve equation uh, like five times x equals ten, right? And you, you get x equals two. Solution. Solution is one number. It's not a wave. For a wave, you need a lot of number infinite number of numbers. So it should be something different. It should be not simply algebraic. Um, huh? Yes. Yes, we need trigonometry. And uh, um, I will refer to Wikipedia article on trigonometric functions in a few minutes. Uh, it's a, you can succeed, you can succeed in, in course without trigonometry, but if you uh, refresh it in the you, unit, your life will be a little easier. But trigonometry is more about how the solutions look like, how the wave that is being <coughs> generated looks like. But which equations generate wavy solutions? Hmm? No, no, wave functions is, is our solutions. Like there, there should be an equation that generates wave functions. So uh, list, please list me um, courses in math that you are taking. Just give us different uh, titles of the courses. Calc 3. Huh? Yes. So which equations generate wavy solutions? Differential equations. OK? So we, <laughs> so we, we need, uh, today we need trigonometry and very basics of, of differential equations. So in, in, uh, in narrow sense, in very narrow sense, do not tell it in public. Physical chemistry is applications of differential equations. You apply what you if you are taking differential equations to 
objects through the enterprise. Okay. So if you were could took or is taking differential equations now? I'm okay. And you, you may consider to uh, take it in the future. Um, later on, um, I, I have a plan to get acquainted and learn your names, but if, if I start asking right now, I, I will not uh, record. Maybe you at the time of the first um, homework or first uh, presentation. Okay. Oh, but I, I want to know something about your schedules. Is, um, I know that I'm limited and I'm expected to um, entertain you no longer than 50 minutes, but how uh, strict it is? Do you have any of you have classes strictly at uh, noon or? Okay, yes, I'll, I'll keep it in. Mind. Okay, start, set, go. So um, at the last page of the booklet and in the materials distributed, you'll see list of lectures, and they slightly change from year to year, but uh, they are, most of them are recorded, so you can uh, watch them and uh, save your time. And also, there is a, a link, I, uh, maybe it's not exactly this one, but I, I'll share it. So if you do not feel well, or you just you know, feel enough energy to walk to class, you can watch it uh, at home, and your face will appear there, and you can interrupt and ask questions. Um, so, Traveling wave and wave uh, equation. So, an example of a wave is uh, this perturbation of like, level of water or um, deviation of your string or rope from uh, from uh, equilibrium position progresses forward, right? So, if you have function then after some time it will be translated in space but time should be in the argument of, of a function so if you um, um, create some wavy object and function this way means it's infinite number of numbers right? so some shape and we are not specifying which one it could be uh, just one peak or something complicated but the um, typically you can say it is a traveling wave if after some time, if you uh, add time times factor to your position, it will be a translation of the, of the whole function. And it, it can translate either forward or backwards. This proportionality between uh, time and space is built. Good? Easy enough. Hmm. Which function satisfied? You were prompting which functions uh, satisfy the condition of traveling wave? Which functions will uh, reproduce itself if we translate it? So one of the very typical solutions of the wave equation uh, is trigonometric functions. Right? So it's a periodic uh, perturbation in space, and if you add constant shift to the argument, it will be the same shape, but shifted forward to backwards. So if, if we speak about like science and cosines, how can we wrap our mind and wrap our tongue around it? Which uh, words are needed to describe a sine and cosine wave? Frequency. Frequency, what else? Yeah. Amplitude. Amplitude. And phase. But you were telling about oscillations as a function of time. And if you are speaking uh, about oscillations, 
oscillations in space, like sand waves that do not move, just drawn on, on a surface. It still can be uh, peaks and dips, and you can set up, you can measure distance between peaks. How will you call this? Yes, wavelength. And it's uh, common to call it this uh, Greek thumbnail, right? And frequency is in inverse of period. So how long would it take for the wave to come to the same phase, the oscillation to come to the same phase? Make sense? So if the argument of sine or cosine changes by one, function comes to its initial value, right? Uh, one times two pi. So if you, uh, if your position is shifted by lambda, then you have two pi times one, and it comes to the same phase. And same is time. If uh, we wait for a time equal to the period, it comes to its uh, initial, initial phase. So traveling wave. You subtract position and, and uh, time. Well, it would be. Um, we are going to do two things, practically two things uh, that will be take home message. Uh, give me, uh, I, I don't want you to disclose it in public, but give me a little sign if you ever did laundry yourself. Good. So, uh, give me a little sign if you ever put a cup with a drink, it doesn't need to be alcohol, any drink, on a laundry uh, machine when it uh, comes to the drying uh, cycle, when it, it uh, rotates with uh, high frequency. Try, try it. <laughs> it. It's not dangerous. And look on the surface. If you did it, did you? What did you observe? Uh, basically, like a layer of wave on the sound of the cup. But does it move? No. So it doesn't move. Uh, the equation that we put uh, here, it is it is a travel wave, <coughs> right? But uh, um, there are two types of waves, generally. Traveling wave and standing wave. Like if uh, it has not, not nowhere to go, it is standing. And uh, your uh, flowers for electrons in atoms, those are st uh, like SPD electrons, those are standing waves. So if you are putting cups with drinks on your uh, uh, wash machine and someone asks you what are you doing, I'm studying SPD electrons. It's my <laughs> physical chemistry assignment. For, for the labor day. So uh, we will do two things. We will uh, study how to convert traveling wave into standing wave. And we will use trigonometry for this. And uh, second thing, we will, we will not derive, but we will sketch a basic idea how to construct a differential equation that will give solutions like that. And stop me if you if I'm mumbling not in an understandable way or it is too boring. You can either slow down or speed up or skip something. So suppose two students students not interesting, two faculty are running into each other and not stopping. What what happens? They just get bruises because of colliding so humans or cars. Not good. What if you throw two rocks into water and generate two waves? Is there, is there any damage to the wave? Well, they interfere, but they, they pass through each other and then, then uh, propagate freely after. So if, um, if you look on the traces of, of the from wave one and wave two, after they pass through, they are, they are not changed. So one of the uh, nature of waves, uh, they are linear. 
So there is nothing wrong and nothing bad to set up a collision of waves. It will be not a collision. It will be just interference. Add, add, add them together. So what if we take uh, one wave going forwards, another going backwards? So we, we use the same x or lambda time over t. Here and there. Here it goes plus, and here is minus. Here is plus. So it means one wave is translating forwards, another is translating backwards. That's good data interactions. You cannot call it interrupt. They just being added together. They are superimposed. Um, well, uh, when we will get to electrons, they will interact because they have uh, like Coulomb propulsion. But there are a lot of waves that do not interact. Like uh, waves uh, on the surface of water or electromagnetic waves, they do not interact at all. They just pass through each other. And as a beginning, we, we, we consider non interrupting waves because we do one step per, per, per time, otherwise, it will be too many. So, just mathematically, two traveling waves are added together. What should we do? It's a little exercise if you know how to do it to uh, solve it. Convert it from summation into product. Trigonometry. Uh, give me a sign if you have an idea uh, what, how to convert summation into product. How to, uh, what one can do with such trigonometric uh, equations? You do not need to solve it. I will not call anyone to, to the board, but just general general idea. You may uh, you may have seen it in um, like high school. Like uh, one of the symbols in the alpha, another to beta. Would you be challenged by um, if someone asks you to replace a sign of summation into something, into products of a single uh, argument, you recognize it, right? Do you recall the equation or you just generally remember that there is something? Basically. I'll try my best to print uh, these equations and distribute once. But if you can recall or find it in Wikipedia, it could be useful. Just uh, saving times. So uh, what, what I'm um, today there is no time because uh, limit. But uh, later on, I'll show how to derive this equation. Like I do not trust my memory. There is a way to very elegant way to derive. It. It's much easier than to look into Wikipedia, but. Uh, for today, one can just look into Wikipedia for three geometric identities, and it will show. Um, do you see it, or is it too small? So, cosine alpha plus beta, cosine alpha, cosine beta minus sine alpha, sine beta. So, for right now, um, have you been in in circus? Or you, you know what circus is in entertainment? I just do not know the, the English word, but uh, there, there are um, special part of a program when a person um, throws objects into air, catches, and do several objects at the same time. Jungling. Jungling, yes. So we are just jungling with equations right now. We are already, we are already done with uh, scientific meaning. So we are jungling with science and cosines. And we are we're looking into a way to process this uh, cosine of summation. Right? So what would happen, remember, a couple of slides ago, we had plus and minus as an argument between this uh, one alpha was position, beta was time. right? And once for a wave going backwards, it was plus. For getting forward, getting forward it was minus. If you put minus sign here on the left, what would change on the right? Huh? A change in size. Yes, perfect. 
You see why? So the sign of uh, cosine of negative, uh, if you swap argument of cosine, it, it doesn't change. It is a symmetric function, uh, even. And uh, sine is uh, odd, anti-symmetric. So if you swap uh, sine of beta, the uh, sine, the sine, I can pronounce it, sine of a sine. You swap. Okay, so I'll probably exercise it myself just to check that I. Um, and um, I'm super lazy. I'm probably the laziest of anyone in the class. class. So instead of cosine, I will write c. Instead of this uh, 2 pi x over lambda, I will write alpha. So c alpha minus beta, c alpha plus beta. So when it was minus, it was cosine alpha sine beta minus sine alpha sine beta. When it is a result of sine, then it will be a sine alpha sine beta plus sine alpha sine beta. Do you know how to add together big numbers if you do not have calculator? What, what's the name of the rule? You put them uh, two numbers, one under an, uh, another, and add together in each digit, and then you like roll over uh, anything that is bigger than uh, uh, ten into into next digit. Right. So one can practice. What's the name for this? Long addition. Long addition. Long addition. So one can do long addition for numbers, and one can do long addition for equations. Let's do long. Long addition for for these two equations. Let's just add together the two equations. Oh, it's um, it touches the screen. I want to put a little plus sign. Good. So uh, then on the left, we'll have cosine alpha plus beta plus cosine alpha minus beta. The stuff that we have here. Right? And what do we have on the, on the right? Cosine alpha plus sine beta. Right. So sines will subtract and cancel. Cosine alpha, cosine beta. So now let's uh, look on it from physical chemistry point of view. Originally, we had two waves that propagate towards each other, running to each other. And as a result, let me return back to the uh, two cosine two pi x lambda times cosine. 2 pi times over tk. So instead of summation, we've got a product. And how do we interpret it? So if we select any point of space, like x equals x naught, right? then this we are looking on only one spot in space. And then we have oscillations. So if you, the way you go up and down, up and down, with this period. If you fix time, it will be uh, just a periodic wave. But the positions of maxima and minima of this wave will not change. So basically, when you add together two running waves, they will combine into standing waves, which means there will be nodal points and uh, maximum or minimum that go up and down. We are going through this little simple exercise because when we will get to actual electrons, it will be a little more complicated. So we better discuss it. Stop me, ask questions, develop questions, maybe ask them later. Oh, okay, I give it 
first time this week. So in, in this, how, how would you look like? So instead of two uh, cosine waves running to each other, at one point of time, it will be higher here or lower there. And as time passes by, those will just change uh, phase, but zero points will, will not move anymore. So it is what you see if you do your homework for uh, Labor Day. You put glass with uh, drink on a, on a one way facility. So one part can be, so it is spatial part, because it depends on space. Not like extraterrestrial space, but like position. And another is time, temporal part. And they are kind of independent. They are just multiplied by each other, right? So we are done with mathematical experiment number one. Uh, from now on, you are certified experts by converting traveling wave into standing wave, okay? Now, let's, uh, oh, five minutes, it's very generous. So now we need to, uh, five minutes for differential equations. Uh, we need to compose an equation which will give this product as a solution. Okay? And uh, we will do reverse engineering. As uh, we see the final product, and now we will try to build the industrial facility that will generate. So, uh, yeah, let's, let's so let's do mathematical experiment number two. No, 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 no. Sorry. Um, we are going to take this function and practice just a couple of derivatives, first and second derivative, and see what happens. Okay? And you're, you're uh, welcome to go ahead and start, try it yourself. Uh, I will not do it better or quicker than you. So, um, if we are taking derivative for space, then the part that depends on time will not change. If you do the same, whatever, cosine 2 pi t lowercase or t capital. And the um, spatial part, we need to recall how to take derivative of cosine. So first, if you take derivative, then anything that was in the argument <coughs> will go as a constant uh, up front. And then if you take derivative of uh, cosine, it turns into negative. negative sign. Yeah, thank you for negative. That's good. Sine of two pi x over lambda. Do not literally copy because first uh, I have other calligraphy, second uh, this touch screen is not perfect. Now we need to practice second derivative. So if we take uh, this uh, expression and apply derivative once again. The temporal part will not change, right? Because we are taking derivative only over space. And when we apply one more derivative over space to the sine function, we will get 2 pi over lambda once again, which means that we have power 2 here. And what is the derivative of sine? Cosine. So minus stays here, and we get a sine of whatever we need there. So basically, we, we are getting minus 2 pi over lambda square of our original function. Is it beautiful? You just make two derivatives and you reconstruct back your original function. What if we practice the same thing to, uh, with uh, time derivative? So the spatial part doesn't change. And for the time part, we will get uh, 2 pi over p 
here and minus sign because it is uh, we convert uh, a sign into sign sign of whatever two pi n over ticket and when we do the uh, second derivative the spatial part is not changed and here we multiply by minus one two pi over here squared sign of whatever was the argument and it will be minus two pi over t capital squared times original function. So no matter we take second derivative over space or second derivative over time, we come back to original function. Can we say that second derivative over time equals to the second derivative over space? With some uh, proportionality factor, right? So congratulations, now you are certified experts on building differential equations that give wavy solutions. So uh, this proportionality uh, factor, like two by t squared lambda over two pi squared, uh, two pi will cancel, and it will be lambda squared over, over t squared. And distance over time is what? Velocity. How soon the wave passes uh, the distance equal to the wavelength. So second derivative over space, second derivative over time of unknown function multiplied by velocity is the wave equation. So if you were uh, carefully doing all homeworks in uh, differential equations, you are able to solve this equation and re regenerate, reconstruct wavy solutions. Good? If you need to go, you, you are free to go. I, I will uh, entertain you for a couple of minutes, but it will be more entertainment rather than core um, sense. Um, you all have flat TVs. We all have flat TVs. But what was the TV before? Apple. Huh? Apple. Yeah, it was like a uh, glass tube, right? So with uh, electron gun, and when electrons come to the screen, there is a scintillation, and then it converts electron beam into into light. And if one designs a uh, double slit, classically there should be nothing in between, only straight lines. But if one carefully does it in darkness, there will be signal in the center because uh, electrons are waves they interfere and there will be pat interference patterns um, and i'm going to exit and then come back and you'll see some rules So, um, what, what do you see? So you, you do see some uh, um, central point and then some waves that go in a circle. Um, those are simplified connection between our principles of wave motion and very first attempt to describe atoms in the nuclei. So if we accept an idea that electron is a wave, then by moving across it like a snake that eats uh, its own uh, tail, it interferes with itself. And it can either move forward, move, move backwards, or form a standing wave. So depending on the uh, how quick it moves or how close it is to the center, it will develop different number of uh, fringes. And it is what uh, Bohr model is. So forming standing waves on a linear motion on, on a circle, according to the principles that we already got. And uh, it was one of the... So if uh, 
the angular momentum, if the uh, pace of these revolutions is a uh, specific number, integer, then it will be good standing wave. But if one uh, tries to do something um, fractional, then it will just look ugly. And um, all mathematicians know that the correct solution must be beautiful. If something is ugly, it is wrong. So uh, therefore, in Bohr theory, this uh, angular momentum takes discrete values. So it was just a little uh, illustration. Done. Thank you for your time and effort. No homework. Just enjoy. Happy Labor Day. And see you on coming Wednesday. Um, I haven't seen this course in Blackboard. Huh? I haven't seen this course in Blackboard. So, um, I haven't said this course in Blackboard. There will be nothing in Blackboard. Oh, I will send uh, uh, things by email. Oh, okay. So, do, do so you're, you're not going to use the Blackboard for anything? No, no. I hope you don't mind. Yeah, yeah. This is nice. <laughs> And uh, after each meeting, I will stay uh, a little longer, just in case anyone develops questions. Thank you. Thank you.